and good morning. Oh, happy Resurrection Day to you. I'm standing here in my living room on Sunday, April 12th, 2020, an Easter to remember, an Easter unlike any other than we've seen. It feels so good to see you all on Facebook. I can't even, even though I can't literally see you as I see your names pop up on the side here, I'll keep kind of glancing over furtively to my left to see who else has joined us and know that it's because I love knowing who I'm connected with here. And it would be like we're all in church together. So welcome to Paul, oh, Jeanette and Jeanette. We have both Jeanettes. I love it when you both show up at the same time. So I know that you both exist. So we have two Jeanettes on with us. We have the Jordan brothers. We have Martha. We have Molly. We have Fiona. Hello, Yvonne and Fiona, two of our newer members. It's great to see you. And Bobby Williams is on. Tanya is on. Happy Easter. Those of you that have kids at home, I'll have our ending with our surprise for the kids. And we have a YouTube video that Miss Dana put together. Her daughter helped her put together a fantastic video. I'll mention it several times throughout the day today, but over on YouTube at the Unity Northwest channel, we have all of the Sunday services. We have everything that I do midweek that we record. And we now have a youth it's not called a page. We have a youth uh, playlist. There you go. We have a playlist just for youth and family. So families out there at home, you've got some special videos just for the kids from Carolyn and Dana, and you can take a look at those later. Hello, Rod. Rob, it's good to see you. And Karen, welcome. Let us pray. We now open this sacred church service on this very special Easter Sunday. We now gather as a community in a new way, on a day of new beginnings. We rise up in consciousness. We rise up in technology. We rise up in our hearts today to greet this new beginning, to greet the overcoming of whatever challenges we may face as a society, as a family, as a mind, as a body. Because we know the truth is there is one presence and power active and working. We are that presence. We are tapped into that presence and we express it this morning in a unique, unique way at an Easter at home service. And while we don't have the benefit of being together in the room, we have the benefit to truly take this message in, perhaps in a more personal way, a more individual way to say, what does today mean for me? What am I receiving today? And what am I putting back out into the world? What is my expression of Easter today? We are open to all the blessings and possibilities this holiday has to offer us. We open and let it be, and so it is. Amen. Again, happy Easter to everyone. Let's see who else has checked in with us. We've got uh, Hallelujah from Arturo. Rob and Lori are here. They're going to be moving into this area. We welcome them already. And Brenda is with us. Good morning, Brenda. It's great to have you. Amen. And I am going to now read from the Daily Word for Easter, April 12, 2020. I recognize the risen Christ in family, friends, and my spiritual community. Early in the evening on the day of the resurrection, Jesus, unrecognized, joins two of his followers as they journey from Jerusalem toward the nearby village of Emmaus. Accepting an invitation to stay and share a meal, Jesus takes bread, <clears throat> blesses, breaks it, then gives it to the hosts. In that moment, their eyes are opened, they recognize Jesus and alive in their hearts, he vanishes from their sight. Later, 
The two explain to others how the risen Christ became a living presence to them in their fellowship of breaking bread. Easter celebrates the risen Christ, an immortal presence freed from all limitation, awaiting discovery in every person and every life event. I recognize the risen Christ in shared experiences with family, friends, and my spiritual community in person and online. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. From Luke 24, 31. We're also welcoming Karen and Mary. Good news, everyone. Chris made it on. Yay, Chris, it's good to see you. She's here. And the Bostons are both here. Wonderful. Great to see you all. I'm going to share with you a couple of announcements as we get started here. First, the PSA is please be wearing masks if you go out. One of our congregants, Cindy Georgiulis, she's on the front lines and she's reminding us all the time on behalf of all the workers out there, please wear your masks even if you don't think you need one. So here, wear your masks. Also, want to let you know about my experience, our experience this week with Instacart. It worked really great. We ordered from Costco and we ordered from Tony's and Costco came in two days and Tony's came in four days. So uh, again, so many of us staying home, taking it seriously. And I know it's hard for those of us that getting out to the grocery store is the only thing that breaks up our day. And I offer you the opportunity to think about for just another week or so, if you can let someone bring you groceries, especially if the older that we are, Arturo is um, in that age range. He's not that old and yet he said, let's just not risk it. So if we could do that, I invite all of you and I had a great experience with Instacart and that can be what your um, relief check goes for to pay for that service fee so you don't feel so bad about spending that. All right, so we're all wearing our masks. We're thinking about getting our groceries delivered. And I offer you an opportunity to be in service in this time. And perhaps some of us have a little more time on our hands. So if you have even five minutes, 20 minutes, a little bit of time that you could help us out at the church, we need some help making some phone calls. Um, the people that are making calls have full lists. There's a lot of people to check in on and we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're in touch with you. And if we haven't reached you yet, reach out to us, send an email to the church. Our chair is gonna post uh, Betsy's email down in the lower corner there for you. So let us know if we've missed you and you need a check-in, please, we're here for you. And if you've got a few minutes to call someone, I had heard a great thing this week, each one reach one. If each one reach one happens, then everybody's checking in on somebody. You get the gift of service and someone gets the gift of you being there for them. So let us know if you can make a couple of phone calls and if you're available to help people get on Zoom. And if you need help still getting on Zoom, please make sure that you let us know that. And always be checking Facebook for updates. That's the most current place to check. If you aren't on the email list, please, please, I'm begging. Do you see me begging? I'm surprised at how many people I've asked and I say, are you on the mail list? And they say, I don't know. Well, are you getting an email from us every week? Gee, I don't think so. Okay, great. There's an email list. Go straight to the Unity Northwest dot org webpage. Right at the top, Kelby's done a great job updating our webpage put in to be on the mailing list. That is a critical thing for you to know about. And we are going to have Zoom fellowship after this. I invite everyone to come over with us. And again, if you haven't figured out Zoom yet, please let us know how we can help you do that because there's a lot of stuff going on there and that's where we're able to connect with you. I'm looking for my notes here, connect with you and see you one-on-one. -on -one. That would mean a lot to us. Okay, I was looking for my notes everywhere. My notes are right in front of me. Let that be a lesson to all of us. It's like when the glasses are on the top of your head. If you haven't already, make sure you fill out your census. If you haven't done taxes last year, in order to get your relief check sooner rather than later, you need to have filed taxes. So get on that, do some searching online to make sure that you have an automatic deposit option so that you can get your check sooner. 
What else do we have? I've said the email list, get the Zoom app, and here is my email. I'll have Arturo also put that down in the box. So revelizabethmora at gmail.com. You can reach Betsy through the church and you can reach me personally on that email. All these wonderful ways that we can stay in touch. And then as we move into our meditation time, before we do that, I am going to also mention all the various ways that you can give to the church. And we are so grateful for you. On our altar back here, I have a piece of paper. This is our application for the payroll protection program that many of you have probably heard about that's in place to help small businesses and small churches. And so um, to make sure that we can keep paying the staff, including myself, we have done that um, thus far. We are continuing to pay um, Tatiana and Bruce, myself and Betsy. And we wanna be able to continue to do that and, and keep the church going. So we are grateful for the gifts that you continue to give. We are doing what we can to reach out um, to put ourselves in queue for that. So here's all the ways that you can donate. The first thing is you can certainly send us a check and here is our mailing address. The best way that I have found is to set yourself up on online banking. If now isn't a great time to finally take that step, I don't know when it will be. You will love being online. I've been online banking over 10 years, never had a problem. You also are welcome to donate to us on our webpage and right here on Facebook. Right on the Facebook page for the church is a big old donate button. So if you go to the Unity Northwest um, homepage for Facebook, it's right there. If you go to our webpage, it's right there. So we've got all those various ways that you can give and we are so grateful. And now let us sing along with a Bruce as we start to move into our meditation, I'm going to share a little song that Bruce William, Bruce Williams, Bruce has, re Henry has recorded for us so that we can have a sing along today. Simple lyrics. This is Prepare Ye, the Way of the Lord. From Godspell. Super simple words. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Sing along. the Lord. Y'all sounded great. And as Megan likes to say, you looked good too. Good morning, Angela. It's great to see you online with us as well. Who else has zipped in here? Victoria Brooks and my friend Victoria. So we have two Victorias. Great to see all of you online. And now let us enter into a time of meditation. I invite you to gently close your eyes. Or if you'd like a soft gaze, just take a look at something here on the altar, perhaps the candle or the palm leaves from last week. Whatever your focus is for meditation, I invite you to go there now.
This is a sacred, holy time. I now enter into this peaceful place, this joyful place, with a mindfulness around resurrection. This is my Easter Sunday meditation, a time to recognize all that I've overcome, all the ways that I have risen up past so many Good Friday experiences. And that is the message and the hope of Easter is to remind ourselves of how much we have already overcome. I might even take a moment to consider one thing that was a challenge in my life that has now drifted off into the past, into the background. I may have overcome a health challenge or many health challenges. I may have had difficult relationships. I may have overcome bouts of depression or mania. Perhaps I've learned to set aside excessive worrying. Perhaps I've overcome a lack of faith at times. In all the ways that I myself have done what Jesus did, that I have walked through dark times and come into the light, the light that is always there. When I have taken off the covering of a bushel to let my light shine again. When I have turned in consciousness to a truth statement, I am one with all. The Christ in me rises up today. This is my Easter meditation. Let me rest in the strength, in the wisdom, in the love, in the fortification that this remembering brings to me in silence. This time has been healing for me in spirit, mind, and body. I am healed, I am whole, I am well. And I send that same knowledge, that same blessing, that affirmation out to the world. The light of God surrounds us all. And so it is. Again, it is so great to see everyone here this morning. I'm just remembering that I had a couple of special things to click over to for my sermon. So give me just one second as I make sure that I'm in the right place. And as I am doing that, I'm going to ask if everyone down in the chat box would let me know if you have some prayer requests. And I know that I have a couple of folks that I want to make sure that we hold in prayer this week. People have been reaching out to me and letting me know. And so I'm going to make sure that I mention those as well as we continue to move forward. There we go. I think I found myself in the right place. And I did. I'm in the right place. At least I think I am. Yes, I am. 
Okay, so as I get ready for this and you tap over and you put over into the chat box over there, your prayer requests, I'm going to mention my friend Jennifer, her father just went into the hospital and they have determined that it is COVID. They thought it was something else. And so to Peter, we hold you in the light. And to his daughter, my friend Jennifer, we hold you and your family in the light knowing that you are being prayed for by all of us. We pray for all of you and we pray for those like Carolyn who are just now overcoming her COVID. We are so glad to hear that Carolyn is feeling better. Thank you, Carolyn. So good to hear that. And as I switch back over now that I'm set up, and there we go. Christine asks that we pray for her husband, Phil, a couple of um, the mechanics where he works and Phil himself, who's just come from surgery. Phil and Christine, our prayers are with you. Uh, we see that the right employment is coming. We see that all the support from the programs that are out there are rushing up to support you. And we know and hold your prosperity is God. And we hold the same for all the nurses, the MDs, the CNAs, the grocery workers, and all the frontline workers, social workers. We hold you all in the light. Teresa Olson is a nurse and Connor, granddaughter's fiance, nurse at Mayo Clinic. So Audrey's family, we hold you in our prayers. We also hold, I see back here, um, Eric has been healed. We see Eric healed, whole, and well. And then there was one more I wanted to let you know about. Uh, many of you knew Pat Connors. Pat Connors passed this week after a long battle with cancer. I was lucky enough to meet her once when she came to church and talk with her. And I know she was a dear friend. I've never heard such praise for somebody. People just loved Pat. So Pat, we bless you and we see your soul moving on. And you made a difference here in this church and touched a lot of lives. Thank you. And we're praying for Karen's niece, Stephanie, a physician assistant who's working during this time. And prayers for Joe, Matt, Val, Bob, Bonnie, Barb, and as Tanya said, for Pat Connor's family. She was the first smiling face that Tanya met. Oh, isn't that great? See, you never know who you smiled at first and who you first greeted at a church, how many years later somebody's going to be talking about you. So it's so wonderful the way that we greet each other here at the church. Okay, now the hair is coming down. It's serious time. Let's do a sermon. I've got this all set up here for you. Imagine, if you will, St. Paul's Cathedral. That is the scene. That is the place. St. Paul's Cathedral in London, January 30th, 1965. It's a funeral, a state funeral, one of the biggest probably they'd ever seen. And after most of the funeral had taken place, those who were sitting in the galleries heard this. the trumpet coming far in the top of the dome. And then just a second later, as taps came to an end, on the entire other side of the dome, they heard this. You see, Winston Churchill had planned his own funeral. And he wanted the last message of his funeral not to be taps, but to be reveille. We are up in the morning. It's time to get up in the morning. 
that is what Winston Churchill wanted the last message at his state funeral to be in 1965. That is the same message that we get when we go from Good Friday to Easter. We didn't have a Friday, Good Friday service at Unity of um, Northwest Church this year, but the Good Friday experiences was still happening for all of us. I could feel the energy on that day and I watched some things online because there is no Easter without Good Friday first. And so in the Good Friday experience, we have the opportunity to overcome and to remember that the light will always win. The light always eventually lightens up the darkness. And yet there are these times whenever I preach on Easter, whenever I think about the affirmative prayers of unity, I am still reminded that not everyone at all times is there, including me. There are Good Fridays in my experience, and there are Easter's, and the Easter's are always more powerful. And yes, <laughs> they are more sweet because of the Good Friday that I may have just been through. And this, this year, this, this is an Easter to remember. This is an Easter with a real life Good Friday for many people who have lost their jobs, who've lost their lives, who've lost a loved one who are suffering with this, and if not the COVID itself with the shutdown and all of the implications and just the fear and the concern and the worry and a novel virus that we've never seen before. It's a Good Friday experience, basically for the whole world. We are united in different ways, but we are all united and impacted and aware of this. It is a global Good Friday and resurrection into Easter. This is a special one, folks. I'm pretty sure we're all gonna remember this one. And what is it about the Easter experience that you most wanna grab onto? that you most wanna make sure that you have solidified in your heart from this experience. Years from now, when we're telling these stories, where were you during COVID? What house were you locked up in? When did you really realize? When did you first put on a mask? What's the story you're gonna tell? Because you're creating it right now, even as Jesus was going through his crucifixion, he knew where he was headed. He knew that he had the ire of Rome. He knew that he wasn't going to live long in the way that he was, that he was going to need to transform, and he did, to live on in consciousness with all of us, as all of us. He knew and he prepared. And so can we. We can be prepared for how are we going to tell the end of this story? Will you end with taps? Or will you end with reveille? What story do we want to tell? This is your story. This is your Easter. I say that for all holidays that we go through, for everything that is experienced in the Bible. Ultimately, it's a personal story and what I know about it and how I live it. And that's why in the meditation today, I talked about the overcoming that you've experienced. What is your Good Friday story of life? What is your Easter story? I think of all the friends that I have that I know and myself who have gone through a divorce. One of the hardest things to go through for most people. And that you come out the other side. I see names in my box over here who I know have been through that, who I've gone through it with and who went through mine with me. And here's the Easter experience that you come through, that you find out strength that you didn't know that you had. And yeah, you're a little bruised from it. And the same with Good Friday, the same with COVID, the same with any challenge that we're feeling right now, anything that we're going through related to this or something else, or if not today, in the future when it happens. 
Easter is an inspiration for all of us about the overcoming that we can experience. Now, some people ask, did it really happen? It's a question that naturally comes up. Did Jesus really resurrect? What really happened? And there are a number of theories about this. Most scholars, only the very few far, 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 far out fringe scholars or opinion makers don't believe that Jesus exists. Virst virtually everyone believes that Jesus existed and he was probably a preacher who was crucified like thousands of others at that time. Did he exist? Yes. And yet there was something about his story that lived on beyond all the others that were similar to him at that time. Something seems to have happened. Jesus, according to Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore, simply unloosed the dynamic atoms of his whole body and released their electrical energy. And this threw him into the fourth dimension of substance the kingdom of heaven. He transformed physically in a way never seen before and maybe never seen since. That's what Charles believed. It's not unlike a Buddhist teaching of what happens, that your atoms disperse, that your consciousness disperses, and we don't come back in the same way. Or Reza Aslan, writer, one of my favorites says, the resurrection is not a historical event. The event itself falls outside the scope of history and into the realm of faith. Not so much about what actually happened, but what happens within all of us, what happens in meaning for all of us. We could view it almost like a parable, if you will. One of my favorite books on understanding Easter, Good Friday, to understand it politically, to understand what was really happening at the time, and to understand what it means inside of me is this wonderful book that combines the last week with um, Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan. It combines the historical with the religious. What a shock. You can have the two together, folks. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And so this is what they share about it. Seeing the Easter story as a parable affirms, believe whatever you want about whether the stories happened this way. Wow. Believe whatever you want. Now let's talk about what they mean. So that we can come together with someone who believes something totally different. What you believe about it, set it aside. What does it mean to you? If you believe the tomb was empty, fine. Now. What does the story mean? If you believe that Jesus's appearances could have been videotaped, fine. Now, what do the stories mean to you? And if you're not sure that, or even if you quite are, let me say that again. And if you're not sure about that, or even if you are quite sure that it did not happen, that's fine. Now, what do the stories mean to you? The most powerful message that I get is the story of overcoming. The story that light always wins out over dark. And the story that this is part of a human journey. I get some compassion knowing that, yeah, there's going to be a challenge in my life, probably many of them, and I will walk through and I will overcome. And I don't forget the fact that at times it can be really painful. Like my heart goes out even on Easter Sunday when I could preach just all lightness and love and overcoming. And I, I could do that. And I, I want to have that as part of the message. My heart still goes out to the folks that are really struggling. It almost makes me tear up, you know, as I am aware of my privilege that I'm in a safe home and that I have enough money to buy groceries and haven't lost my job. My heart breaks for people who have a much harder story right now. And I don't want to forget them on Easter and I don't want to gloss over this. I want to be a purveyor of hope, but I also want to be there with you and say, I get it. 
a friend of mine shared that a friend of hers had just gotten so worried and upset by all of this that was happening that she ended up in the hospital. They had to admit her to the psychiatric ward for depression and anxiety over all this is happening. I get that. I can understand that. So there are people like that where it is deeply, deeply affecting them and our hearts are there with them too. And that's why when I was watching the Andrew Lloyd Webber Jesus Christ Superstar presentation on Friday, I got so in touch with the story this year. It was a powerful presentation and I'm so grateful that it was put online. It was one of the best that I've seen. And one of my favorite scenes is in the garden before Jesus is taken away. It's the most human portrayal of Jesus wrestling with what this all means. And well, Bruce can say it so much better than I as he sings Gethsemane for us to understand more of what Jesus was going through and what we go through. Sad 
in time. After all I've tried for three years, seems like nineteen. Why then am I scared to finish what I started? What you start? I didn't start. God, thy will is hard, but you hold every card. I will drink your cup of poison. Nail me to your cross and break me, bleed me, beat me, kill me, take me loud before I change my mind. Now, before I change my mind. I know there's huge applause for you out there, Bruce. Wow. That is a man facing an experience like we will never face. And I see that Bruce's wife, Sandra's online and she says, thanks so much, Bruce. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And that put me so much in touch with what Jesus must have been going through. And from Keep a True Lent, I came across something wow, that just went so well with what Bruce just sang. We who have studied the mind know from our experience the ills of humanity all have their root in thought and failure of man to express princip principles in harmony. There needs to be more cooperation between the two planes of consciousness the absolute and the relative, because they complement each other. And that's what Gethsemane is about. It is about a man struggling between the absolute realm where there is no death, the relative realm where there is. Religion becomes practical and effective in everyday life when it incorporates psychology as part of its litany. Mic drop. We are now at a time when we can honor both psychology and religion and find that they work together so that we can have compassion for people in their Good Friday experience and provide them the hope that an Easter experience brings them. Yesterday when I was walking, I saw these hearts on all these driveways and the neighbors were standing out and I said, oh, to the kids, thank you so much for your artwork. And they said, oh, we didn't do the hearts. Somebody went around anonymously and put hearts on all of these driveways. There are kids doing that and I've seen it online, but when I saw it in person, it was even more special. There are so many amazing stories of pizzas being delivered charities receiving donations, workers receiving support. We have a long way to go still, but there is so much inspiring out there for us to remember. And even in this book that I shared with you from the last week, here's what our scholars tell us to take away from this. Good Friday and Easter, death and resurrection together are a central image in the New Testament for the path to a transformed self. The path involves dying to an old way of being and being reborn into a new way of being. Good Friday and Easter are about this path, the path of dying and rising, of being born again. That is the path that you are on, my friends. That is the message for your Easter. That when taps is over, revelry will play. That we will come out of this COVID pandemic, this shutdown, we will come out with new learning, with longer ways of being. We will fix systems that need to be fixed. We're awake now, we're alive. And on this day, let's once again, let Bruce Henry remind us through his great music, how we want to live this day and every day forward with a message from our dear friend Bruce. We'll close with a little song and then we'll wrap up. 
Here we go, Bruce, take it away. Sing along if you know it, you probably do. If you would like to give, you can give once again by sending a check. You can set up online banking. And right here on our Facebook page, you can click the donate button. Arturo is also going to pass uh, post the link so that you can simply jump over to our web page and give right on the front page. There's a donate button so that you can give. And we're so glad for that. Also want to remind everyone tonight, Debbie Rosales Evans, Debbie Evans Rosales is going to be doing a healing bowl service. All you need is a phone. Arturo is going to put the information for the phone call in. So you don't need to be on your computer. You can turn it off and just listen to the sound of the healing bowl. She asks that you don't announce yourself when you come on so that we can keep this as a sacred experience. Six o'clock tonight, Phone number is on the web page, is on our Facebook page, and our chair will be posting the call in information down below. When we get off here, you can jump over to Zoom. Uh, the link again is on our Facebook page, and I don't know if our chair will get that link in there as well. There you go. There's the information on Debbie. And then uh, if you'd like to come over to Zoom, have virtual coffee with us, say hi. We would really like to see you, even if you can give a couple minutes we would love to say hi to you and Bruce you're getting all sorts of shout outs today and one more thing we'll have more information being emailed to you but our own Bobby Williams she's on today hello Bobby she has come forward with an amazing offer she has a coaching program uh, soul coaching for 28 day a program and it's normally at $275 she is donating it for a love offering to anyone who would like to be supported for 28 days you will get a month, a daily email and inspiration and all of the proceeds for what she charges for this. She is donating to the church as a way to give back. Bobby, you are so kind. So Bobby Williams 28 Day Soul Coaching Program. We will have information to send out so you can sign up. And um, we're just so grateful for the ways that everyone is giving. And so as we wrap up, I say Thank you, thank you, God, for being with us today. In honor of Easter, we're going to close out with Oh Happy Day. Oh, and our true is going to bring the kitty. We have to have our kitty show. So we're going to close out with some more of Bruce singing Oh Happy Day. And I will see you over on Zoom in just a few minutes. Email us, call us, be safe, wash those hands, wear those masks. And it's Oh Happy Day. We're going to play out. I'm going to get that.
Easter. He taught me how to fight in me. I'm looking at the link to send to you about Zoom. Thank you, everyone. And finally, I am going to post the results of the Zoom. Where do you want to go for the Zoom call? We will get this down for next week, but I will put the um, tiny URL down here in just a moment. God bless.